the point okay so this was a different challenge right this was a challenge which sorry to break it to some people is exactly what a product manager does i would say 20 20% or 30% in fact there was an interesting post yesterday from shankar who was uh, uh, one of my contacts uh, and when you onboard into github uh, your roles are chosen right so you're a designer you design you're a founder you you know create companies etc and you're a pm you write design specs you write specs uh, that is actually a little demeaning to to the product manager but to be honest it is it is a large part of what a product manager does so uh, take this challenge with a pinch of salt in the sense that uh, it it may not be as fun and interesting but this is if you get into a pm role or if you already a pm you must be doing this but if you get into a pm role uh, a large part of your life is going to be this right but the interesting elements still still exist like the user research part exists understanding of the customer still exists and once it's actually created and rolled out the feedback that you get and working on optimization etc those still exist but design and you know creating those screens and the mocks and annotations may or may not happen depending on which company or which role you're working most on b2b i would say that's my bias i would say this is exactly what a what a pm would do so this is a different kind of a challenge and i hope that you felt that way i hope that you got the when I, when i was writing the problem statement also it felt very different from the other challenges there was no hypothesis that i needed to create this is how it is this is what notion is working on even right now and this is what their pm most likely is also doing right uh, you know they are they are collecting feedback from people getting the inputs from users exactly what you are doing but the end goal might be you know babji put some light on exactly how the end result might look uh, so we'll come to that part later so that was point number 1 the other one is uh, i think i think somewhere somewhere that uh, you know line is not clear to some people uh, and also not not just the people who submitted but people outside of that group there's a difference between an api and a feature right uh, so it's not easy to explain here but i would say an api is something that you consume right you you, you have some endpoints and you build something out of it you create something new out of it most likely something additional is going to get created out of an api so api has a full form not really relevant i mean especially to designers but it's something that will enable some interaction to happen right something to work on top of a base layer that is what an api enables a feature is something that is inbuilt that you know it's within that application so some of you suggested certain things the, that were actually features right great to have features i remember a couple of ones and i'm not pointing people out here but i remember what pooja had mentioned and that i would love it as a feature auto backup to google drive or auto backup to say apple cloud or whatever xyz because i have personally had experiences uh, with notion whereby you know files have suddenly disappeared you are on the free plan yes uh, but still that happening for business documents is a bit scary especially if you put in effort into that and that document completely disappearing is a little scary so that would be a great feature but would that be an api uh, i don't know and if you think that a feature can be an api then you need to you know show that path you know how does that feature then become exposed to somebody else to build something on top of it so a lot of you guys have suggested fantastic features and those most likely will come to notion some day right uh but they may not be apis they may not be something that somebody outside of notion will get access to or within notion i can create something and then give to somebody else. so one of those two may not happen with those those are inbuilt and they stay within notion right so you need to understand that part very very uh, clearly what is a feature versus what is an api if it's not clear you can ping us again uh, any time uh, we'd love to explain it to you with a real practical example of how we do it at ux act where we consume apis and where you know something is a feature it, i think i think when you see it on the workings it it becomes even more clear than you know what 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 i'm saying right okay apart from that then there was this whole thing about uh, you know this differentiation between read versus write uh, so this is again related to the earlier point uh, there are with apis there are two ways of as, as the the article if you read it which 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 we had shared there are two ways to approach this right there are certain apis that notion could expose to the world outside and they could somebody could build something on top of that say you know an integration kind of a thing you know an integration happens with say integromat or zapier or these kind of tools and then they do something with that and that third party then is able to build some product on top of notion that is one part right so that is like they are going to read out of out of notion that is one type of api then there is a right kind of api whereby you know something is happening somewhere else suppose you are doing something in trello and that card is now needed to be updated into notion now in that case you need a notion api to be exposed whereby it's a right that is going to happen right 
so this difference also when you're putting that point out that you know uh, you know i'm going to create this feature set this feature set i think it makes a little sense to you know you know compartmentalize those you know which are write based which are read based uh, where information is going to go out of notion where information is going to come into notion once you understand that modality once you understand that how you break that part down i think it becomes much much easier rather than just saying you know this is what i want to do which is very high level you know those high level parts are not sufficient you need to go one level deeper and understand how it how the interaction happens of the tool or product or whatever xyz with notion suppose you're building a cms for example couple of two three people have said you know you build a cms on top of it fine understand you know understand that feature but how is that interfacing going to happen what kind of apis do you need for a cms to be built is something that you need so you need a right api you need a table api you need some level of detailing into that uh, that is what is expected when you're putting this kind of a you know product doc so to speak out not too technical because you're not a developer as i said it's not about a technical document but it is something that a developer should understand it is also something that a product manager outside of your company should understand 